Throw it live. Hello everyone, my name is Rath. Welcome back to the stream. Uh, it's been a couple days since I've streamed. Um, just had not been a whole lot going on. People were taking breaks and, and stuff. It was happening. But, we're back. Um, hello, guys. Players. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm here with Mr. Pickles. I'm here with Fred. And uh, we're back with the strange town of Golden Ridge. Now, this is a game that we've been away from for two weeks now. Um... Unfortunately, uh, I think it was an illness, right? It was a sickness or something. This guy got sick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still recovering, so if I forget to mute myself when I cough, I apologize. We'll do our best, but uh, we're back. Um, I'm going to throw it over to the storyteller. I'm not the DM for this one. I'm going to throw it over to the storyteller, and uh, he's going to bring us back into the game. If you guys are watching on YouTube, welcome to episode three. Thank you for, for sticking around with us. If you guys are watching on stream, uh, settle in. Uh, I'll talk to you guys in chat. And uh, hopefully everyone enjoys. Pickles? Yes, I am fading away into this forest, apparently, because my lines are less defined than the other people's here. That's fine. I, I'll live with that. So I'm running a game using the system Savage Worlds, uh, Adventure Edition. We tried Deluxe Explorers, and I hated it, except that I loved it, but I found that there's better ways to do this. Anyways, I'm running a modern horror investigation game where the characters are all centered around like looking into crimes and trying to solve problems. Uh, before I get into what kind of problems they're solving, though, let's jump back to them. Let's uh, give a little quick explanation of who you are and what character you're playing, and we'll start off with Wrath. Uh, yeah, so I am playing Travis King. He is a bail bonds recovery agent. Nailed it that time. Uh, it's only taken me like nine episodes. Um, he's a Bill Bones recovery agent, so he's basically a bounty hunter in the modern day. He is new to the city, and uh, with that has come a whole slew of paranormal activity that just has him kind of freaking out. Um, he's a very, uh, let me pull it up so I get this accurate. He is a very, <clears throat> it's not there, excellent. Uh, Stand by, I should have had this ready, I apologize. He's a very curious uh, character, which makes um, him a great investigator. He, he kind of dives into stuff uh, without caution. Um, and it's just for the pure sake of, I guess, fuck around and find out would kind of be uh, his motto. Um, he's also a very loyal character, and so he, he really wants to take care of his team. He's got King. No, he is King. He's got Titan, uh, his dog, who he's always going to take care of, but he's also made a friend, quote-unquote, with uh, a police detective um, and has even gone as far as to save his life and put himself in harm's way to make sure that his friends come out all right. Um, and so with that, Travis King is on his way to becoming a, a very interesting, probably one of my top interesting characters that I've ever played. Different. But I'm kind of okay with it. It's a very different character. A very chaotic energy character. I've gone on too long. Let's talk about the uh, police detective. So, police detective is Frederick Varde. He is a very straight-laced policeman. Likes to do stuff by the book whenever possible. But he knows that some things are not by the book and can never be by the book. Um, he's been working in the strange town of Golden Ridge for a good long while. He is both cautious and brave, so he uh, knows where to draw the line, but if he has to, he will cross the line. Um, basically, he's a normal guy that gets caught up in a bunch of shit that he doesn't really want to be involved in, but he has to anyways because it's his job. That sums also, up our two... Oh, go for it. He's also an associate of Travis King, um, sometimes to his detriment and sometimes to his uh, um, benefit, I guess would be the best word. Um, he's sort of kind of friends, sort of kind of not. It, we're getting there. <laughs> and, and that sums up the duo we have here. Uh, the two people who are actually starting to see that weird things are happening and that they need to handle it. With this adventure, however, they've been sort of sidelined by the police chief of town. It's sort of made them a little paranoid, but they're being forced to go on vacation up in the woods that you can kind of see all fuzzy around me. Um, it's outside of town a ways, up in the hills, where things are a bit stranger than the strange town of Golden Ridge, where things start to get a little bit unnatural even where people do have guns, and they're very protective of their guns for a reason. You guys have seen a lot of odd things happening, and most people have been rather nonchalant about it. For example, there have been mimes 
mime ladies hung from trees. And people are like, that's just, uh, that happens. It's been happening. There are stories about ghosts in the woods that whistle before they kill you in vengeance for things that the pilgrims did or whatnot. There's strange things that you found in the cabin that you arrived at. There's a door locked uh, leading to the basement that was locked from both sides. Made it impossible that somebody could have, like, locked it and got out. You found what looked like clown cocaine down there. There's all sorts of things acting weird. And you expect the squirrels to be normal, but even they're being weird here. There's a lot of weird things happening. You found strange runes at the bottom of the lake. I feel like I'm just listing a massive list of this place has bad written all over it. But, I mean, the rune at the bottom of the lake seems to be helpful on Travis King's arm. He found a ring as well. And so all this is happening within the first day. Various things you're uncovering. You found a stranger that wandered into your camp. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on. You tried to make sense of it by making a research room, a study board. But after sleeping at the bottom of the lake last night, Travis King and Detective Verde, who didn't sleep down at the bottom of the lake, have found that the research room has been trashed. And that's where we leave off in this, is it's the Saturday morning of your weekend trip here. You're supposed to be having fun, but everything's just spiraling weirdly. What um, would you guys like to do? So uh, am I in the room and Travis King's on the way or what? I believe you guys were both in the room looking at everything when we left off. So I was trying Travis to King being like, why? I I should have watched the last episode, at least the end, to remember. But yeah, I think we got... To be honest, I don't even remember. But according to this, we're back in the room. And yeah, if I remember right, start right, there. we're back there. All my, re all my research was gone? Uh, no, it's been thrown on the ground. And like everything's been... Like somebody went in and just tore everything down. And ransacked it. Okay, okay. Knocked your pencils on the ground. My pencils! No, my pencils! The red string has, like, unspooled slightly. It's on the ground as well. Um, so... We may have a problem, it appears. Um... You didn't lock the door? This is your room, remember? It's our cabin. I locked the front door. If you didn't lock this door, that's on you. I don't care about this. So the, it doesn't matter what door. As long as the front door and the know. back door okay. were locked. We've got random beast, monster, zombie things walking around who are apparently feeding squirrels some weird thrown up version of alcohol. I don't think this is outside the re uh, realm of possibility. It's true. We already know that those things can get through any doors and windows. Um, Cool. Cool. No, it only took me a couple hours to pull all this up. Mm. Can I look Paul around in the... Sorry. Do you think Paul did it? The Wait! Door that you jumped... Isn't that where we left off? He was heading back to the cabin. I was tracking Paul. That's... I do remember tracking Paul. I'm sorry, not to wreck on anything. I just, I do remember I was trying to figure out where Paul went. That was one of my focuses. Um, let's say that you... Uh, it. I came here. It's perfectly fine. I'm just... But let's say you did a, a, a round. You tried to see if there's any obvious area where he would have gone. And you're not seeing, like, anything too obvious. Um, there's no, like, okay. fresh mud or anything. Okay. Um, I mean, it could have been. I'm not sure where he went after I went into the lake. Um, Paul's on my... But he's also kind of just a wandering homeless guy, right? It's kind of his motto for his... Supposedly, but we've seen weirder things. <laughs> weirder things than homeless people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely seen weirder things than homeless people. I mean, he could people. be a, a, a spirit of the forest or something. I don't know. Um... Hmm. Can I look around the cabin? Does it look like they... Took anything? Is this the only room that got ransacked? Yeah, go ahead and roll notice. Alright. Notice. There it is. Alright, rolling. My first roll, it's a three. I would like to... I have currently a four bennies, is that accurate? Oh yeah, let's uh, refresh our bennies. Uh, you should be getting um, uh, Travis, you should get three more and um, Faraday, you should be getting two more. 
Okay, I'm going up to seven, and then down one, I'm using one. I think I can give you yours if you want, um, Fred. Um, I'm gonna there you go. I got a five that time. There I'm going to take the five for the success. Yeah, um, right. Verda, you could probably, like, follow right behind as well. Uh, because of your edges, you don't even need to roll here. You can also pick this up pretty quickly. Right. Um, as King wanders around, doesn't look like they mess with anything else. This is the only room that got hit. Is and there's nothing missing from the room. It's all just thrown on the floor and trashed. Uh, yeah. So well, they were obviously very specific about what they targeted. There was something in there they didn't want us to know. It just seemed like they didn't. Maybe they just don't want us investigating this. Why just if throw we it went, on the ground? It's weird. If we went through that room, would you remember anything that was missing? I don't know. All right, I, I'm gonna my walk conscience back. didn't answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna you you don't back. see anything that you can identify that's missing. So there's nothing missing that we know of. Yeah. Okay. So if there's nothing missing... What's weird is... <laughs> If they just didn't want us investigating it, why did they just throw it all on the floor? Because then we still have it all. Maybe... We just I mean, don't have I, sound, I sound crazy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They're like, ah, oh, these guys are really getting nowhere. They, they don't actually have anything. It doesn't matter. That's a fair <laughs> point. <laughs> They're like tearing it down to put it away. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They're not getting anywhere with this. Because uh, I was thinking, I mean, granted, detective, don't call me crazy. But, um, week we've had. my first thought was, it's some, like, otherworldly force that couldn't steal it, but could, like, affect stuff and just knocked it all down, but couldn't actually, like, take it. Like a ghost, but I'm not saying that. Like a dryad or something, seeing as we're in the woods? I thought I was crazy. Now you're bringing up hey, man, mythical you said fantasy ghosts. creatures. You you said ghosts. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, the logical next step is plant men. We're in the woods. I mean, third day. Roll your occult skill. Oh boy. Did I accidentally get it right? <laughs> Five. I mean, a poltergeist is a type of ghost that specifically knocks things down and makes chaos like this. So there is a ghost that can do it. It's called a poltergeist. Wait, you're I was right. I didn't want to be right. I was just. I I don't know if you're right or not, but it's the possibility exists. There's okay. There's something called a poster poltergeist. Okay. They, their main job in their existence can't really say life. Their main main job in existence is to cause mischief and just tear up anything they possibly can. So what what brings the poster guys to this place, to this cabin? <laughs> Well, the the basement was locked up. So there was a there was a poster guys in the in the basement, and we let it out. It poltergeist, but yeah, maybe. that's what I said. It's a possibility. I mean, I have I have the Ghostbusters or a ghost places phone number we could call. I never really thought they were you know legit, but I mean. I mean, do you think we should call a ghost place to come bust the the cabin? I don't know, thing? man. I'm working off of logic here. Chat wants to know, uh, hey, conscience in the sky. Chat wants to know if there was ever an evil grandma that lived in the basement. I don't know, chat. My conscience didn't answer. Uh, that's... I can't tell if that's, like, an attempt at an Evil Dead reference? It is, yeah, they said from Okay, because that's not a grandma, necessarily. That's just, like, a demon possessing a young woman. And, like, all the... I haven't seen, the like, the show or anything, but if you're talking the original movies, that's his girlfriend. Maybe, maybe she have was have a, a gilf. Are you, are you saying we have a possessed girl in the basement? I'm saying yeah, that Yeah, you glance they're... over there. There is no, like, the, the basement, like, trap door isn't up a few inches with a lady going, <laughs> <laughs> there, You look ah! over, that's not I, happening. I figured Sorry, out the... I, <laughs> I figured out the mystery. <laughs> Here's so the problem. Fair, yeah, there's the problem. <laughs> it was chained shut, that trap door. Right. Well, it's Which not anymore. Where, yeah. It's not anymore. 
Um, hmm. It was also weighted from the other side, like a sandbag was attached, so that even once you did that, you had a hard time opening it. Yeah, that okay. was weird. So, did we accidentally uh, release something that shouldn't have been released from that basement? So wait, first we had aliens, now we have squirrel, monster, plant gods, and now we just released an evil thing in the basement? We are the worst. Older guys aren't necessarily evil, more just mischievous and like to cause mayhem. Listen, like I'm me. mischievous and like to cause mayhem, but... <laughs> well, that's... That's the end of that thought, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All you guys okay. found down there was the clown cocaine and old furniture. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I we have two options here. I searched the basement, yeah. Yeah, you both did. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we have two options here. We can either call the ghost dudes, which I still am kind of dubious about them being legit or not, because you know. Oh, yeah, no, I'm... But at this point, I'm we've got mimes walking page. around getting... We get mimes walking around getting hung in the woods. We got squirrels having drinks at a bar in the woods with zombie bears. <laughs> Ghost isn't exactly out of the uh, realm of possibility at this point, is it? That's right. Yeah, you mentioned zombie bears last time. That's right. <laughs> zombie bears. I don't think that's I, an accurate description at all. I'm, but going, I'm, I'm, going, I'm here for it. Um, I'm going to be honest, Travis. I have no idea where to go from here. We got something showed up, tore up our your, your uh, clue room. Um, <laughs> you're the detective! <laughs> yes, but you're the one that made a damn clue room. I, I thought it would computer. be helpful! It's not helpful! <laughs> it's on the ground. <laughs> thought it would help I, both I, of us. I, we didn't even get to use it. I set it up, and then it was gone. Okay. We can set it up again. I don't know if something will just come and tear it up again. But exactly. We set it up again. Wait, what if we set it up again and it's like a trap? We 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 film whatever comes in and tears it up again. Or we fight him. We shoot him. Okay. What if, if it's, it's a poster guy? If, if it's a poltergeist, I don't think bullets are gonna hurt it. Oh, what hurts? What hurts a poster guys? Um. Fusion beams or something. I don't know. All I know about ghosts is from Ghostbusters and that bo one book I read. Or was it protons? It's a proton beam, not a fusion beam. Yeah. Right. I just yeah. had a fusion, mini fusion reactor. Sorry. I don't know any of this. Yes. Holy hand grenade. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Holy hand grenade. <laughs> That's what we need. Uh, money, money, money. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Travis. I have no idea where to go from here because we have squirrels drinking in the woods, which isn't exactly bad. Kind of weird. I don't know where to go either. Let's can we reset up this room and then work through it together and maybe get like a world check to figure out like where we should go because we've we've got we know we've got the squirrels. We know we've got the aliens. We know we've got zombie bears. We know we got that explosion thing that happened on the street with just the bottle and. It was a bottle with a smiley makeup. face on it and makeup kit left. We got the mines being hung. We got the thing in the lake. We got Paul. Uh, what else am I missing? Oh, Wolf Girl, Mrs. Wolferson. I guess you could rope that one in. <laughs> <laughs> um, at, at this point, I don't know what to do other than just go trapezing through the woods again. Okay, you go trapezing through the woods. I'm going to reset up this room. I'll, I'll help and... you set up the room. I'm just saying... As of this moment, I have no idea where we're going with this. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna see if I can. Yeah, if we, if we reset up the room, is there any like, I don't know, clue we can find out of the mess of clues that we have that we've missed? Yeah, I, I think as you're setting up the room together again, you're trying to piece like what options you could do to figure anything out. And I think there are three big options that at the end of this, you'd probably come to a conclusion about that you have these three options. You feel like like the, the lake, there's something to that, but beyond finding out who threw a block of whatever in the lake, that, that feels like a dead end, most likely. And a lot of these probably do feel like dead ends. You find something, you hear about something happening, and that's that. You find the remnants of a fight, and it's like, okay, so did somebody use the sword from this battlefield? We assume so, but we don't... I don't know. You believe that, yes, you could just go off into the woods and see if 
fate leads you to anything interesting. After all, you are on vacation in an area with beautiful woods. There's surely something that you could find, even if it's just a good time. There's also the other cabin. You don't know go who's the other over there or what's over there. There's know. presumably a party happening. Well, that's really not helping with the yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's case, any connection. <laughs> Police, open up! Going on. You could call your ghost busting friend. A new set of eyes on a situation might help. And he is quite a bit older than you, I believe. So, okay, so we have cabin, woods, cabin in the woods, and then we have Ghostbuster friend. If you want to go check out the cabin... There's also go... the... There's the, the dude who, at the front office, who rented us this place. Maybe he knows something. Yeah. If you want to go check out one of those things, I'll call my ghost guy, and I'll we'll see if there's anything here. And even if he doesn't find a ghost, he might know something that I... Yeah. All right. He's like he, he's a lot older than me, so he'll probably know something. So you're gonna call Ghost Guy. I'm gonna go talk to Front Office Guy. All right. I really have no idea what I'll say. <laughs> hey man, what's with the squirrels, bro? Hey man, I think your I think your cabin's haunted. Yeah, um... like, like... <laughs> oh, this is gonna be an interesting conversation. <laughs> Dude, there's a squirrel bar in the woods. <laughs> Let's start with your uh, friend. Um, I don't know him as well as you do, of course. Uh, what, what is his name? Yeah, his name is Tim. Uh, Tim? Tim O'Hare. Tim O'Hare. Yep. And so, how long have you known him? Uh, I I would say I met him uh, shortly after I joined the PD, so probably about 10 years or so. Yeah, that would make sense. He has a lot of knowledge that's helped you and he might be partially responsible for your occult skill having given you proper books to read when it's been helpful at various points he's been helpful to you i assume yes he's been very helpful with some of the weird things that have happened um mostly explaining things like why a ghost could be responsible but also why the evidence points to it not being a ghost or why it was actually a cat down the street instead of something occult or why it was something occult instead of the dog. Right. So he has a healthy touch of cynicism about these things. Yes. All right. So, yeah, you, you call him. It's about like, uh, let's say, 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. Um, and though, you know, he's usually up at later hours, despite his age, he does pick up. It's very tired. He says, yes. What could I hey, do uh, for you, detective? Tim, it's Fred. Um, I've got a problem. Um, you know the woods up in the mountains with the cabins that, that uh, oh, what was his name? Owns them and runs the front office up here. You might be thinking of Lake Uskowski Cabins? Yeah, that thing. Uh, Lake Uskowski Cabins. Um, I am familiar. Yeah, do you know anything about them perhaps being haunted or something? Well, there are many strange things that happen up in the hills. You know that, Detective. Yeah, um, I, I had a drink at a squirrel bar earlier. A, a squirrel bar? Yes. <laughs> oh. You might be in a lot more trouble than you think. Um, no, no shit. Um... Yeah, so uh, we found that one of the cabins that we rented, because we're supposed to be on vacation up here. Obviously, that's kind of out of the window. But um, one of the cabins up here, the basement was locked and um, weighted closed. That's not right. Why would it be weighted closed? I have no idea, but we opened it and found um, some uh, glittery powder. And then shortly after that, we left and came back, and an evidence room we had set up, or clue room, or, you know what I mean, lead room was set up, had been torn all the pieces, so I didn't know if there was a history of poltergeists up here or something. The hills are more alive than they are haunted. If what you're wow. saying is true, I think... 
the area you're in, the area you're in is very active, and you should probably leave. Well, I wish that was an option, but we've got people dying up here. Um, we've uh, got reports of a truckload of mimes being killed, and then on the way up here, we saw a mime hung from a tree. Oh, damn it! Yeah, that's what I said. I'll be up there in a few hours. I don't like the sound of that, but all right. Um, anything you can tell me before you get up here? Like, you know, what not to poke? Zombers. Try to make sure that everybody in the area is safe, as safe as possible. If you can congregate everybody in one place for as long as possible, that should help you out. You're going to be dealing with possibly wolves, squirrels, if what I think is true. Okay, yeah, we had some squirrels mean mugging us. Yep, that's that's true. Um I appreciate it. I'll see you in a couple hours. Um uh, we're at the uh the lover's cabin, I think it was called. <laughs> <laughs> of course, detective. Y yeah. You and your girlfriend? Don't, no. Hang on. So the PD put me on enforced leave, and they sent a bounty hunter with me. So I'm stuck up here with him. I don't think I need to know any more about that. I don't Tam, have Tam, any problems. Tam, you know me. Don't start this bullshit. All right, I'll see you in a couple hours. I'll be there shortly. <laughs> he hangs up. Um, Is it the case that King like hung around, hoping that maybe uh, somebody would go with him to go deal with this Tonbert? Or did you just immediately start walking as he hung on the phone? We already put the room together, right? Uh, yeah, you guys had finished putting together the room, then you discussed those three options of... I didn't see, go see the other cabin. squirrel dropping Mr. Trax or anything in the room, right? Um, no, you didn't. Okay. Um, but to be fair, the tracks would be kind of impossible to see unless you put down, like, flour. You know? There's no muddy tracks. Yeah. Um, what time you of day is it? You could put down flour. Because homeboy's um, it's probably 10 not working. Oh, right. Yeah, it's the next day. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's 10 a.m. on Saturday. Um, He's probably not working. I don't know. Weekends. Well, they've only got two cabins and both are rented. Yeah, He should be on call. Should. So even if he's already left, I'm going to try and follow him. Because, you know... Tim's conversation was not a good one. I'll just <laughs> kick it in one of these chairs and get away. And uh, yeah, the, uh, I'm going to oh, go kick back in the chair and call him up. Call up uh, the uh, front office. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you did get his number. Um, or, or if not, there, his number was like posted somewhere. I hope. So you yeah. can call up. Ding, 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 uh, good morning, this is, uh... You've Tra reached Tobbert. Please leave a message after the beep, brah. Just kidding, I'm fucking with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, how can I help you? What a roller coaster of <laughs> fucking emotions! A roller right coaster now. of emotions, man. Got any problems? Yeah, I got. <laughs> yes. What's your name? Bonbert. God, I hate you. Uh, <laughs> my name is Travis King. I'm up here at one of your cabins. Yeah, lovers' cabin. Yeah. Why is the uh? Why is the basement locked? I don't know. Management told me that they wanted to keep it locked. And who's your management? Some some rich dude. Okay. Very, very I don't really know him too Robert. well. <laughs> I think he's he says his name is Mr. Sack or something, but like <laughs> that's all I know. He pays and I stay. So it, it, right. any problems? You having parties later? You need some help throw parties? No, um, you, uh, God, um, what do I even want to ask you? 
you guys have any issues with the wildlife up here? Uh oh. Yeah, sometimes, but whenever there's problems, I call in like the wildlife experts and stuff, and then they deal with them. It's like every once in a while, a wolf will get too adventurous, you know, man. Like he thinks he could take off a baby or something, but that's not acceptable. So squirrels get a little bit hungry too, you know. Like people feed them donuts, and then they get all confident and like will run up to you. They're like monkeys, you know. Like in India, the people feed them the food scraps, and then they think that I, they deserve. Them. I set the phone down like five minutes ago and just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting anything out of this guy. Yeah. Fuck it. I just put the phone down and I'm like, kid, just... <laughs> just leave. <laughs> don't even want to keep your phone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't want anything. It's been infected with this guy's stupidity. I mean, it's on it's the desk. Syndrome. It's on the desk. I'll get it later. Um, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Oh, man. That was the worst. Um... So yeah, you both probably finish up about the same time there, and both look at each other with an expression of that was the worst. <laughs> okay, so um, Tim's got bad news for us. So um, Ton Berg, Ton Ton of Lord, I don't know his name. Ton Berg. So good news is place probably isn't haunted. Uh huh. Bad news. Um, my dry added idea was probably a lot closer than I was comfortable. with. I thought Poster Guys was, was close. No, he said it was probably the woods being a little more alive than they probably should be. Um, he said the nature up here is very alive, and um, I told him about the squirrels, and I told him about um, everything else that we found, including the glowy pow uh, powder. And um, he said our best bet is to wait here until he gets here. Well, front office... Well, actually, he had nothing to say, so you got a lot more than I did. Uh, part for the course. He doesn't know expecting. anything about why the basement is locked. The place is owned by some Mr. Mr. Bag. Mr. Sack. Uh, Mr. Big Sack? Mr. Bag Sack. Mr. Sack of Bags. I don't know, man. It was, listen. What the fuck are we doing here? You got me, bud. So your police officer boss man sent us up here as he was covering up all the stuff going on back there. We're out yep. here and now we've got crazy wildlife attacking or whatever it's doing. Yep. None of this makes any That bottle with the happy face on it, was there anything in it or is it empty bottle? It was a full bottle of liquid. I believe it had like a wax seal on top. I mean, is it just unopened? Yeah. Oh, okay. Completely full, unopened. With a smiley face carved onto it, like if somebody had a knife and was like trying to etch it poorly. As opposed to like being molded into it. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's... Can I do research on the ring slash tattoo? Uh, yeah, you certainly can. Um, that'll probably take a little while. Uh, while you're doing that, Detective Verde, what would you like to be doing? Um... I don't really know. Um... <laughs> Could I guess I'll just keep canvassing the entire area around the cabin and the cabin itself. Yeah. See if um, I missed anything. Wait until your comrade arrives, perhaps with answers. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so we're going to fast forward through with the research then. Go ahead and roll your research roll. Um, I'll give you a plus two bonus. You talking to me? I'm talking to Mr. King. Okay. Doing his research. Well, oh, I got a 13. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a 13. 
Um, yeah, this is actually very straightforward. These symbols are well researched and well documented, you find, and so you're able to pull them up. And so from what it looks like, the tattoo on your arm indicates water and air. And it's placed in a way that your research suggests a, um, a not an equilibrium, a, um, like working together. These two symbols here are in harmony rather than opposed. That's the tattoo on your arm. The ring is somewhat more complicated. There is that water symbol, but there's also a symbol that indicates blood. And these two symbols, of course, are matched together in a similar harmonious way. Water and blood are working together. Now, a lot of people suggest that these things might be indicative of, like, uh, all sorts of different concepts. Like, uh, uh, the, the water and blood might be something associated by some people in artworks made of, uh, what's the guy with the long hair in the Bible? Samson. Like, great strength. Uh, people historically or in narratives that seem to be powerful. That's what it's generally associated with, but some people could seem to align it more with daredevils. Something that, uh, you know, you might get like a screenshot of Evil Knievel, like with blood dripping down his face, and it makes the symbol for just that, like, image. That's more or less what you find is a bunch of people hypothesizing about what old runes that are very simple images could mean. <clears throat> There's parts that strike you as, oh, I'm seeing faces in the Twin Towers collapse, like the smoke, seeing faces there, and that means there's the devil. Like that kind of thing, where some of them it seems a little bit far-fetched, but at the same time, there's a lot of examples of this online. There are other symbols you find, like fire, water, obviously, air is another one, but like there's earth. There's, there's a whole community of people who are obsessed with these repeated symbols in Pacific Northwest culture. I want to walk back into this room and I'll pick up my phone. Is he still talking? Um, if he wants to be. Oh, I thought you were talking about Fred. And I, <laughs> I guess. Um, no, he's already hung up. Oh, okay. Um, I'll put my phone away. I want to clear off this table, not the wall of this, but the table. And uh, I want to start putting out all our evidence. The bottle, the makeup kit, um... Whatever else we've collected, the uh, the uh, you have a dagger. Put that on there. Um, pull the dagger out of his pocket. Yeah, pull his dagger. Uh, pull, uh, grip your dagger slowly, caressing it with one hand, sliding it out of your pants, and then I sit on the table. Um, <laughs> Detective, do you do you want to add your dagger to the pile? Uh, I figured he would be allowed to add yeah, it. Yeah, you know? that's that's fine. What else? Okay. We've got the bottle with the happy face. We've got the makeup kit. We've got that. What else have we collected? You gave Found away the cocaine. gun. Yeah, the bag of cocaine. Yeah. You gave away the gun to the people, to evil bad guys. Uh, have we collected Please. anything else? Yeah. That, that's what I said. Um, let me look at my gear. Do I have anything that we've collected? Um, I don't think so. What big show of bug man? Oh, and I didn't get my telephone tab or my bugs. Okay. You're looking at your items on the table, and it's probably yeah. about noon or so by now, when finally, somebody arrives at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Knock. I got it! Uh, I don't move. I'm still studying the items on the table, trying to figure out how any of this is connected or works or functions or anything. Uh, I put my ring on there as well. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Detective, you're able to get the door, and it is your comrade, uh, Tim O'Hare, standing at the door, looking very dour, and dressed in a coat as if he expects to be out in the rain. He says, Tim? Things are going to be very difficult. Are you prepared, Detective? Reaches over next to the door, grabs a shotgun. Yep. Good. All right, show me what you've found so far. All right. You ready for a trek? Yes. Are you bringing me to the squirrel bar first? Yep, squirrel bar. All or do right, you want to see the you... basement first? 
Up to Would you. you like to tell your bounty hunter friend? Hey, Travis! I will walk out of the room. I'm going for a drink. <laughs> you can see past him, okay. and you see a dour-looking man. <laughs> it, it strikes you as, like, um, an irritable old librarian. Could I hear them from that room or no? I will say you can. I'm going to look at him and then look at his friend. I'm wondering how his friend knew that I was a bounty hunter. He said so on the phone. Did he? Yeah, yeah I did. Oh, okay. Because it's not a girlfriend. It's a, <laughs> he's a bounty hunter. I'm over there like, I'm I'm like I am about to shoot this guy. Um, like, okay. I'm going to see what I can make of this. It is likely best that we should stick together. In this case, they may be going after those who are separated. Who? I mean, that would be me, but I mean, who's going after? Once you share your evidence with me, I will be able to tell you more clearly. But you should certainly know that there is something after people around you, if you've seen mimes hanging from trees. I mean, are you guys going drinking, or are, you, are we looking at this evidence? We're going to the squirrel bar. Why? Because it's evidence. Okay, we kind of have a one-stop shop right here, but... Okay. Well, I mean, Detective, should we go that. into the house instead? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, you guys presumably go to your evidence room? So, <laughs> we've got a room of evidence. You're like, let's go other places. I mean, he looks in at your insanity, the red string hey! with papers <laughs> connecting all sorts of things and, and events, all the stuff you've encountered, and things that are, like, aligned around it. The clues that led you to go to that spot on the road where allegedly a semi had been destroyed, mm -hmm. where Paul even said that semi had been destroyed. You thought that there should be evidence there, and you found nothing but just a glazed piece of pavement like a magnifying glass. I've got been... pictures of all this, too. So. Yeah, you have all that stuff, and so that's part of the corner. But he looks at the table and seems a mixture of confusion and alarm. He says, have you been interacting with mimes, detective? Um, one gave me a knife. Mm, this is not good. I should have warned you before. The mimes are not to be dealt with. They are fickle individuals. They do not play by rules. Play into their own passions. Um, I mean, it didn't kill me like everything else did try to do that week. That's fair. Well, there are a number of forces at work here in Golden Ridge. And the mimes are one of them. Myself yeah, and my colleagues out. are another group. Oh. If they've given you this knife, that means they've given you a gift. A token that they're going to try and utilize later. Is that good or bad? Could be any of those. But if you owe somebody a favor, it might not be good. Unless you like them. I mean... Does them giving me a knife somehow make I, mean I owe them a favor? I would say so. It's not often you come across these gifts. Picks the knife up the t off the table and kind of just holds it up in front of Tim. This is what they gave me. I don't know how much good it does, but... Have you checked to see if it does anything special. No, I haven't really had anybody to stab. What if it didn't need to be used to stab somebody? I mean, I haven't had a reason to use it for anything other than stabbing. Um, stabbing, cutting, what else is a knife used for, you know? Uh, it's very true. I just, uh, last time I saw this sort of metal... A mime was making it change into all sorts of things. 
now you've interested in me. Try. Uh, wish for something else, perhaps? Maybe one of your guns you're so fond of? All right. What to choose, what to choose? This is the question. Yeah, what is the what is the thing you want to think? Um let's turn it into a nineteen eleven. Just the easiest one out of all of it. Yeah. You you think to yourself that you wish it was a nineteen eleven. Roll your spirit. Roll spirit. Oh spirit, spirit, spirit. Have... Should be in your attributes. Attributes. Spirits, Rather yeah, one of the skills. attributes. It's not a skill. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your this raw willpower. Uh, no. Would you like to use a Benny to reroll that? Benny! Give me a reroll. Ooh, Damn. exploding dice. Exploding yes. dice! So immediately, as you think, I do wish this was a 1911. <laughs> Bam! The metal just shapes itself into a 1911. It's still very silvery, and not looking like a 1911 would look visually, but it turns into that pistol, and it feels like the same weight, more or less, as the knife, I mean. Can you, yeah, turn, it in, can you turn it into the other gun? The one that you Watch gave to, to the police? Uh, okay, I'll try and do that. Yeah, well, now that you know how to like focus and like the the wishing element of it it immediately just goes it turns into that gun's shape though something inside you makes you think it's just a luger like it's not gonna act like that one did yeah but the only way to test it would be to aim and fire well, we never tested the other one yeah you didn't really see firsthand what it looked like i'm gonna poke it out the window and shoot uh, yeah, as as you like aim, it shoots out, and it makes no noise at all. It's dead silent, but it shoots out a pellet that you can tell is actually like some of the metal itself, because it, it hits into the ground and then slowly begins to draw back to you, like it's crawling, creeping along the the lawn, crawls up the building and up into the windowsill. Well, that's kind of weird. It's trying to make its way back to the gun. It's got the you can carving. Tap, you can tap it and be like. It rejoins. What was the question? It's got the carving in it? Uh, it does have the engraving, but uh, yeah, it's just shooting like a regular 22. Okay. Except dead silent, of course. Alright, well that's not what I was expecting at all. See, if they gave you this, then either they trust you, or they want you to help them at some point. Did you do something deserving of trust? Um, yes, I think. Um, you know, um, the there's some creatures down in Golden Ridge that were kind of like zombies, kind of. Reckon zombies. They they were like they had made that of mud or something. I can't really explain it very well. Travis, what would you call those things? Travis is just kicked back in a chair, like oh. <laughs> Tell me, where did they come from? Did they come from somebody reanimating a corpse? Yeah, it was from the sewer. Uh, from the tunnels beneath the town? Yep. Yes, indeed. That's where sewers are. I, I found the mimes carvings. There's a difference between the sewers and the tunnels, though they may connect at certain points. I found one of the mimes carvings in one of the big uh, tunnels. Yes. It was like carving, it was a painting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was painting. He nods, says, yes, there is something evil beneath Golden Ridge. 
and as I said, there are many forces in Golden Ridge that are attempting to fight back, the Mimes being one, myself and my colleagues being another group. We are colleagues. Bunch of Ghostbuster fanatics. Something like users. that. Reddit we users. all... We study carefully and approach these problems with caution. Oh, it's more like 4chan or whatever then, yeah? No, nothing like 4chan, young man. Oh. I, so we, we got rid of the monsters in Golden Ridge, at least as far as we can tell. And would that be something the mines would be happy with us about? Yes, if you eliminated some of their enemies, certainly they could be happy about that. But you have not eliminated the threat to Golden Ridge. Obviously not entirely, because now we get the fucking things that look like bears up here. Bears? It's the same sort of monster thing. They look like bears, though. Interesting. Is it... And they chased you through the woods? No, they were feeding the <laughs> the squirrels their puke. Right, at the squirrel bar. At the squirrel bar. Well, the, we I think sound it's going to... so insane. Yes, I think do. it's going to be easy for you two to believe me when I explain that there is an ancient artifact rumored to be buried around these areas that allegedly got animals all riled up. The stories that surround it are native spiritualists and chieftains who would have this carved flute that would cause animals to become enraged and help them out. Wolves just suddenly charging on white settlements. Uh, squirrels flowing like a river over people in more modern takes on it. If there is a sort of animals being civilized moment, that is part of the tales as they begin. Whoever potentially found this artifact might be why there's mimes active in this area. Might be what the mimes are after. Of course, they're reckless. It's no wonder they're dying. But would they be dying by the truckload? So mimes, well, zombie that's... bears, aliens, corrupt police, and a Pied Piper. Corrupt police? What? <laughs> he, he chuckles. It's not too terribly wrong, is he? Uh, Fuck nah. you, Tim. You're not one of the corrupt ones. Uh, unproven. You're one of the practical ones. You you I'll... can immediately tell. He's probably talking about the other detective, especially. Just my fucking luck, huh? This guy gets it. All so right. the question is... Do you want to be around when this person is using this flute to uh, do what they wish? Not especially. It's why I said you should probably leave immediately. So just leave the mimes and whatever's up here to fight it out? Some things can sort themselves out. Is this one of those things, though? It's impossible to say. It's always impossible to say. What do you think, Travis? Part of me is ready to move back to wherever the fuck I came from. <laughs> Iowa. Oh, really? No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is you're from out of state. Yeah, that's all I know, too. Um, I'm pretty sure last time we played, I was like, oh, I need to write my whole backstory. Yeah, I didn't do that. Uh, my bad. Um... Yeah, part of me wants to do that. The other part of me is curious. So, what sucks is like I'm curious, but I can't figure anything out. So it's not helping my curiosity. Uh, well, here's a question: Where does where does just where do you think things are? What? I don't know. I mean, you're looking at all this and being like, what what is? Maybe you should go. As I said. You could go further into the woods, see what you can find. There's that other house, another... I keep pushing the party. 
It's like, I just want to get drunk and crunk with my friends. Yeah, I know, but there's nothing directly tying us to that other house that would make me just go invade someone else's... It'd be like me going into my neighbor's apartment and being like, Hey, I heard a noise when I was over at the gas station, so... I'm kicking in your door. What do you got? My neighbor's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, it just yeah, it doesn't feel connected to me um, for my character. To, I mean, obviously, I feel like that's something we should go investigate, but my character you could can't go and investigate. argue it. Yeah. Um, I'm still really curious about the where the truck crashed and the bottle and the makeup was found. Like, that's got to be something, but I can't figure that out. It's the lake. I can't figure that out. This is a squirrel bar. Where the monsters came from? Could we track the monsters in the woods? I don't know if I'm yeah, really a tracker, but like maybe that would lead to something. If you have survival, that's where tracking is now. Sneeze. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but you may want to like. I just fell over. If, uh, if that's what you want to do, you can probably. Like, I have survival. Your, it's not great. Your comrades here. Um. Oh no, I'm talking. I'm just talking all this out because I'm yeah. struggling. I'm hoping between the four of us we can figure something out. You going to show me this squirrel bar now? Might as well. I mean, I show him the picture, but yeah, we can go out to it. Would you rather see a picture or the actual squirrel bar? He's seen the picture now. Yes. Um, you probably grabbed a few snacks on the way out um, because it's around noonish when you leave the cabin. Uh, you've had a talk probably the last 10, 15 minutes or so there. Um, and now you're heading out into the woods in the daylight now to see the squirrel bar that you found, I believe, Travis King had seen it during the day and Detective Verde had only seen it at night or in the dark. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you're yes, kind of. You're both traveling out there. You've been there before, so it's not that difficult to find. Um, I'm going to switch you over, I think, by activating. I put a little token on for Timmy. Um, does it activate make you? There we go. Get over here. All right, so you're traveling through the woods, and you make it back to that same clearing. It's a rough clearing like this, and uh, there, the... How do I draw again? Uh, draw for your hand. Um, so there's a uh, certainly a bar that looks much better than that. It's roughly right there. I just want to make sure you guys know. No, that looks about accurate. I, I can see it now. It's like a stump as the center of it, and then it's been carved out along the base to make it appear as if it's a miniature bar, one that would fit, you know, squirrels with small wooden cups that are roughly carven. It's not fine work, but it's functional enough that you're like, what? What? Why? Who who devoted time to doing this sort of thing? And of course, when you saw squirrels actually using it and this strange fungus monster vomiting on it and having the vomit flow down into an area where the squirrels could just scoop up the Vom ale. That seemed absurd. But you're here with somebody who is an academic of sorts. Though I guess, do you know exactly what his credentials are? Uh, yes. Detective? Yeah. Um, do you have faith in his credentials? Yes, I have faith in his credentials, even though they may be a tad bit unorthodox. If you know what I mean. I do know what you mean, because a lot of his things are rather unbelievable. And, I don't know, maybe a little bit... Yeah, actually, unorth unorthodox is the best phrase for it. But he, he looks at this and says, Yes, this is the sign I thought it would be. This is certainly not something that should be dealt with with uh, anything less than complete caution. You don't know how powerful this individual might be or how lost to the artifact they are. While they're talking, what can I be trying to look for uh, uh, tracks? Yes. Roll your notice. A seven. A seven? Yeah. Um, detective, if you'd also like to roll, you may. Um, Solely because your alertness and investigator edges. What exactly am I rolling for? 
um, to offhand look at the same things um, he, he's looking for, or to see other clues that he might not be investigating. All right. So investigation, you said? Think of this as your passive perception. Notice. Uh, yeah, notice. Notice plus four. Should be a total of plus four from your edges. Um, there it is. Six. Yeah, so King picks this up first, yeah, since he's, like, going around. <laughs> There's blood splattered on the bush leaves. Like, you, you go to the, the far area, and you see there's bushes, and... Oh my gosh. Okay. That... No. Titan, why? Uh, Titan's just zooming back and forth right there. That's that's a, the Titan zoom. I, zoom ace pattern. I, I have my head so, in my hands, and you're like, no, Titan. And I was like, wait, what happened to Titan? Did he bleed all over the bushes? And then I look over at the screen, and he's I was like, back oh. and forth. Gotcha. Yeah, all right. he's, he's running all over the place. Um, yeah, so you notice that there is uh, blood on the bushes over there. You probably flag King or flag Verde down. Uh, well, I was doing this while he was talking to Tim. Probably not yet. So I've noticed blood on the bushes. And that's it. No tracks or anything for these bees. Um. Yeah. It looks like there's sort of a. Okay. Let's get out the pen again. Oh, it's good. Like yeah. Blood. Blood. Uh. On these bushes, but not like. It's like somebody was bleeding and like walking along, but there you don't see any footprints, okay. any impressions. That gives me enough. I'm gonna head back and see what they're talking about. What are you guys talking about? Uh, just what is going on? <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, he's saying that this is the first sign of the one who wakes the animals. Yeah, you're gonna have to explain that to me. The story of of it, essentially, in you know all of the narratives, there is at least one person who has been wronged by society or wronged by his tribe, and they stumble upon this strange flute that allows them to call animals into a wickedness that they seek to help, and the help, of course, to somebody who has been wronged is to rip to shreds their enemy. Right, because that's always the first uh, thing I think of when I need help. <laughs> right. In the stories, though, the individual who gets this flute always succumbs to madness. The person who has makes wronged sense. them is killed in roughly the first act. Yep, makes but sense. But then they keep going. Of course they do. Even a well-meaning bearer of this flute, if it is to be the situation, eventually succumbs to evil. Because why not? But that's how the stories go. So, what do we do? Is this flute around, or is it... What, what, what's the situation here, is my question. Well, it's likely to be held by the person. Um, perhaps obsessed about by the person. If they're not holding it, it might be on a shrine, somewhere safe. Right. Um, is it... Possible a homeless person got a hold of the flute, doesn't know what they have, or may know what they have, and just doesn't care. And is going around with it? Is that something that's possible? That's entirely possible. This is one of those um, things that have a mind of their own. Like, take your knife, for example. It won't do anything that you don't tell it to do. It's not going right. to be making you obsessed with it. In That's theory. always good to know, you know? Good piece of the mind. The things that help you learn how to use them often lead you down a path of madness. Right. That's, that's wonderful, you know? In a way. <laughs> so how would we go about finding this person, then? Well... <sighs> There's cabins about here, um, but I think the idea of a homeless person or a hermit could entirely be possible. According to the research I did before I left, quick research at that, 
if this flute exists, it's probably in these hills somewhere. Makes sense. Do I remember Paul having a flute? No. visible? Okay. Definitely not. Okay. He notes, there are a few tunnels not too far from this lake area. A tunnel entrances, I should say. There's one I took note of. It's, uh, I believe, used to be a mine of some kind. A mine. Which I hope would mean that it's uh, a wider one um, with perhaps a minecart track. That's hopeful right, thinking. Where, where would that be? Just north of here. Um, might be about an hour's hike, depending mm -hmm. on how fit you are. Is this map that we're looking at is north up? Um, yes, north, presumably. North be this way? Yeah. How do I ping? I can't ping. There you go. Oh, I see your ping. Is north That's that very way? subtle ping. Yeah. Okay. Hey, these, uh, these zombie bears of yours, were they bleeding? Bleeding? Yeah. Not that I know of. That blood I found, did it look like really old? Or was it new or what? Uh, I'm going to say because of your occupation, you're not an expert, but your professional guess is fairly fresh. Dripping or dry? Hours. Hours old. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that trail leading north is covered in blood. Which, by the right. way... Detective, so... the moment you look over there, you see it. Like, that he's mentioned it, you see it, it just, you... No, there's something wrong. Okay. That's not good. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Could this be our buddy Paul's blood? Your buddy Paul. Homeless dude. The one I was insinuating. I, my I know who blood. Paul is. I don't know who blood it is. I don't know. The, I didn't I was know who Paul to was. Oh. You're having uh, homeless comrades again? Okay. They're not comrades. They're informants. That, right. First right. of all. Second of all, Paul was more of Travis's project than mine. Project. It wasn't a project. He left me to die in a lake. Let's see how the project okay. worked this out? This is very alarming. This is alarming? This is probably the most normal thing out of this entire... To, to be honest, it, that's true. <laughs> Homeless people are a normal occurrence. That really doesn't bother me. Homeless people walking away from a crime scene? Doesn't really bother me. That makes sense. Bloody wolves, woods full of drunk squirrels and zombie bears. Look, King, when uh, you've been so steeped in the culture of this land, the strange does not surprise you anymore. Yeah, I'm not from here. All of this is surprising. All of you are fucking weird. This, all of you are crazy. Everyone in this town, everyone in this area, you're all weird. All of this is strange. Town of Golden Ridge. It's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> We've said this multiple times. <laughs> Commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by King's Crossing. Hi, I'm Grunkle, and I think Strange Golden Ridge. I'm Grunkle, and I approve this message. Yo, we should totally record a Grunkle giving a commercial advertisement of, like, <laughs> Strange Town of Golden Ridge. We could do one of Tor Beckett, too. That'd be awesome. Or you could do it, like, Grunkle talking about King's Crossing, like, like, you've seen The Office where they step away to, like, you know, where they're sitting in the chair in the yeah. office. And, like, Grunkle really felt put down in that scene. Yeah. Um, and Grunkle a... think that some people don't think about his feelings. That would be awesome. <laughs> I would totally record something like that with you guys. Absurd. I would be willing to. Yeah. <laughs> we could do one for this, too. Like, Travis King sitting in office. I don't know. I'm losing my mind, God. Don't... I'm going to shoot people. <laughs> I'm losing my damn mind. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's just like rocking the chair, <laughs> and then it comes back, back from the commercial. Cuts break. back, and he's just like, 
Yeah, so you guys want right. to head north? I'm, I'm better. I'm better now. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're all feeling better now. We're we're back from the commercial break. Travis King probably still looks a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Another commercial break. He's still. We need Tra- it. No, Tra- break. Travis, we're done with the commercial. <laughs> um, so possible mine shaft north of here, following the blood trail. I think that's our only lead that we have that we can actually like follow at this point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, it's direction. A whistle, Titan and I will head off. Admittedly, I'm not too keen on actually getting involved with whatever problems you two are up to. As I said, some things are best left to resolve themselves. Oh, okay. So what you're telling me is that we're on our own up here. To, to be honest, Tim, I would leave if I could, but we've got people dying all over the place. The the mimes have given me things, and supposedly that means I'm in their debt. So maybe if I go and fix this for them, I will be not in their debt anymore. I don't know, Tim. I'm working off the information you're giving me. That's very fair. Look, all I know is that the mimes don't communicate with us, and... The only other group interested in this is the Chosen of Flame. They communicate with us. What's that? Do I even want to know who those guys are? You do recall um, from the last adventure, you uh, your character knew that they're sort of like a fraternity of scholars. They're a bit snobbish. They're a lot of elite people, rich people. It's sort of like, um, it's a social club, but it has connotations that it's okay. like, oh, you're in that club. There's, oh, do you do satanic shit? But it's like, no, no, it's just, you know, we're rich. So, <laughs> we're yes. rich. We're, we don't do satanic shit. We're just rich. But there is that connotation that they have a history of black magic. <laughs> um, and yeah, he, he says, uh, the mimes don't communicate with us, but they do. The Chosen of Flame. They may oppose us on many things, but they at least communicate. I don't know what the mimes would be up to here, but I wish to stay out of their conflicts. Of course you do, because why would it be easy? Um, fuck. I don't mean to abandon you here, my friend. You have been very helpful to me in the past, and I know I've helped you in certain situations. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. want to leave a book with you that might be of a little bit of help. It, it pulls a, a small, like, um, it's like one of those journal books. It's got, like, sort of a leathery uh, cover. He hands it to you. It's not too thick. It's probably, like, 100 pages, 200 pages tops. All right. He says, this has um, a lot of information on what I and my colleagues have experienced with these mimes. That'll Um, be useful. Yep. As well as some symbols that I think might help you out if you come across them. That will definitely be helpful. Uh, All right. Proceed with caution, my friend. And I wish you the best of luck. I will certainly attempt to, and I'm probably going to need it. Uh, With that, um, you're probably seeing that Travis King is quite a bit ahead now. Do you want to catch up with him? Yep, let's let's catch up. Okay. And uh, your comrade Tim O'Hare heads back down the path, um, presumably to head home. Get away from this entire mess. <laughs> Travis no, King, uh, you're, you're uh, heading down the path, and you are seeing um, blood. A- as you know to look for it, there's blood, like, splashed on different things. It's, like, periodic. It's not on, like a, like, a full trail. It's every once in a while you'll see a bush that clearly has been slapped with blood. Um, a-, a tree branch that has a blood print on it. And you guys keep... Uh, or, uh, I should say, Detective Verde eventually catches up to you. And you guys are on this this forest path deep within the woods now. It's still light out, so you can see the light coming through, but it's it's uh, modeled, so it's not fully beaming down on you. And as you get to another field, or another clearing area like the one depicted here, it almost feels as if you're in, like, this night-like area. It's so overcast and darkened 
The, the trees are so tall here and, and giving so much coverage that it almost feels like it's night. Like, like it's got that full moon kind of feel. And you can see that there's a blood trail, like, in the entire path, as if somebody fell, bled all over the ground, and was crawling for a bit. Do you guys want to proceed fully into this field? Or, or do you want to use stealth? What do you want to do? Oh, what do you want to do, Rath? I'm curious, but I'll stealth in. Go ahead and roll your stealth. Of Titan stealth with me. I will stealth with him as well. Go for it. Let's go! Oh, very nice. I don't have stealth. Like a ten. If you, oh, uh, you should have stealth. Stealth is a um. Oh, there it is. Yep, it's a D four. Wait, I have a thing. Hey. What's your thing? I don't know. I can never remember. Um. Sorry, I just uh, noticed something else about my character. Uh, hang on. Uh, okay, cool. I have C suede, page 51. It, what is it? Reliable? Yeah, reliable. Um, I'm just curious how it, I kind of remember how that helps, and I um, should no, be able to use it. I just don't remember. Support rolls. It, it lets you re-roll one support roll. Like, yeah, but you like, get a free roll every time. Like, and it would be like teaming up to do something. He um, has Benny's like, to re-roll. Is it really useful? Depends. Uh, you do have Benny's right now, so you can re-roll a lot of things. Yeah. But... but helping him out and making sure that your bonus actually gives him a bonus rather than a penalty or a neutral. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Whatever I took it, so I'll figure it out. Um. Okay, so we both succeeded. Yeah, so you both uh, succeed, and I'm going to put you into the area. Um, put you ahead of time here. Um, activate. You enter into this almost a night engulfed area of the forest in roughly midday, and you see this circle of mushrooms. And in the middle of the mushrooms, covered in blood and leaving a blood streak path, appears to be uh, a freaking mime. Um, is it alive? Uh, it's difficult to tell from over here. It doesn't seem to notice your presence if it is alive. You guys are very, very stealthy and cautious. You probably have your guns out. Is that oh, true? Yeah. I, I've got my shotgun with me. I'll yeah. make sure to bring it. <laughs> so you guys are like uh, in the perfect position here. Um, oh, shoot. What's the word we used in Ready or Not? Um, like when you're stacked? Stepped? Stack Is it up. stacked? Yeah, stacked yeah, up. You're, st you're stacked up in, in a way that's probably better than how I placed you on the map. I reinstalled that game, by the way. <laughs> I will attempt to get as close to the mime as I can. I'm not crossing the mushrooms. So about to here? Yeah. Well, he's getting to the mine. I'm not crossing the mushrooms. Do you want to cross the mushrooms? They don't appear to be um, like mushrooms you've seen while walking around here. These are large red. Um, yeah, you can take pictures of them. Yeah. Um, like. You've seen mushrooms, yeah, but they're usually small and, like, brown mushrooms, some small white mushrooms, some that are, like, stick out of trees, but a circle like this of bright red gross mushrooms doesn't seem too normal. Um, but at least from the edge here, you can identify that they appear to be alive. The mime lady. Well, that's good. Um... Medical attention, I guess, best as possible. Yeah, go uh, right ahead and cross the boundary. And um, I, I, I'm going to say, as you approach, you can see her issue more. It looks like she's been bitten multiple times by something small. Like She has bite marks all over her arms and her neck and her face um, that you can see. It also looks like she's been stabbed several times. 
Travis, I'm gonna get into this circle. You better fucking cover me. Uh, yeah, I can see that. You're you're in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. If um, you would like to try and roll your healing to patch her up, I don't know if you have first aid stuff I, I, on you. Do you have anything in your backpack that might be first aiding? Mm, not really, no. Wait, I do. My first aid kit. I'll toss in my first you, aid kit. Yeah, you you can throw the first aid kit into the the mushroom ring. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm not going if you'd in. like, <laughs> if you'd like to roll your heal, do you have healing as a skill? I do not. Um, roll your unskilled then, but give yourself a plus two because you have a medical kit, uh, which technically. You should have an unskilled on your character sheet, right? Yeah, I do. I'm trying to figure out how to do plus two. Um, when you click it under where it says modifiers, value, hit the two, and it'll show like a plus two right there. It should be 1d4 minus two plus two. Oh, here we go. Plus See two. There we go. Um, oh. 13, exploding die. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Even if there wasn't a minus two in there, that would just, you know. Um, that exploded it's, twice yeah. over, and that's insane. Uh, yeah, and so if you're not familiar with the system, you need a four for a success. An eight uh, is even better, and a 12 or higher is essentially a critical success. So in this situation, you're applying medical attention to her, and Again. she does appear to be alive. And uh, she starts to, like, move her arms, and something tips you off as odd. She's making a motion like she wants a drink from a bottle, like a glass bottle, like, glug, 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 glug. Mm -hmm. Can I toss in the happy bottle? Yeah, you can. I feel like this is a point-and-click adventure. <laughs> You're trying this <to laughs> item. <laughs> you, you can toss that on over, and uh, I'm not going to make you roll for that. Because somebody is a reliable thrower, you underhanded it. There you go. It came in handy. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, you underhand it over, and yeah, you have that bottle. And the mime lady is like surprised, but also like her hands are out for it. Is there anything in the bottle still? Yeah, it yeah it's like full. filled with a clear liquid. I didn't okay, do it. You got to break the seal if you want to. Yep. I'm gonna break the seal on the bottle and either try and feed it to her or. Let her drink it, depending on how good a shape she's in, I guess. She's in pretty bad shape, but she seems to want to hold it herself. I'm going to start working on a fitness plan for her. Grabs fitness the bottle. Yeah, and then just starts dumping it all over herself. All right. It's like glug, 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 glug falling go. all over her face and arms. Do you want to right. stop her? Uh, like, no, I mean, she knows best with her own health, I guess. Um... You like, know, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I don't know what she needs. Uh, Seems like that's going to get in your cuts, but you know, whatever. Yeah, and it gets all in her cuts. It's like she's going for that. And it smells oh. like rubbing alcohol to you. Oh, oh that's going to burn. What happens oh, is she just hurt. It gets on her cuts, and then she just wipes it off. And it's like the cut disappears entirely and just turns to like dust. And she does that and starts patting herself down and, and goes for the cuts entirely and just starts, like, patting it aggressively. And she's still, like, soaked in blood and now an alcohol of some kind. Uh, but she, she stands up and looks to you appreciatively. At least right. that's all you can make out. Um, can you speak English? She shakes her head no. Okay, you can obviously understand English. Um, uh, uh, well, I guess you're a mime. That's kind of self-explanatory. Stupid of me to ask. I apologize. <laughs> um, she nods, <laughs> but it's a playful nod. Travis King also Thanks. nods. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Titan nods too. Yeah, Titan what the fuck's Titan. going on? She gestures to the blood trail gestures the blood on her and 
she just tries to make a lot of gestures that don't seem to be articulating much. Um, a big concept is people with guns, maybe. Um, and she's like pretending to be a soldier. You're getting hunted? She nods. More or less. Getting hunted by what? She, uh... Gestures about, like... Maybe... She seems like she doesn't want to be here. That makes two of us. Um... Gesturing like... Uh... I'll uh, canvas the other area for other clues or anything while you're, I'm listening. You're okay. You're you're a mime, and I'm having a hard time understanding mime language. Ah, crap. What what exactly? You're, you're getting hunted, but what are you getting hunted by? That's that's the question here. Do mimes know how to write? I'll toss in my pad and paper. Thanks. Hands, him, yeah. hands the pen, pad and paper over. She, uh, like, gets close to you so you can see her as she's writing. And she's writing out words, and you can sort of make it out, like, what she's writing. But as she's writing, it starts to switch to wingdings. So, you, the, like, she's writing it down, and you can follow along word by word, but as you look back, it's, like, changing so that it's illegible. It's, it, she says, essentially, on it, Girl with purple coat is hunting us down. There's a big problem. We're trying to stop it. Right. The queen is waiting for the king. The queen is waiting for the king. I don't know either. All right. Well, um, thank you for being honest about that. Where Urgent we... problems. We have to help them. I think I'm the last one left. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Um, Travis? Yeah. <laughs> We've got problems. <laughs> yeah. So there's a girl in a purple coat hunting the mimes. This one thinks they're the last one. And she has some information that she can't make out for heads or tails of either. You can see Travis is sat at the base of this tree drinking. <laughs> really? Really, Travis? You're not allowed to judge me. We've got problems, man! We got a crazy woman in a purple coat running around these woods shooting people. Mimes. Same thing? <laughs> Those are people. <laughs> she nods. <laughs> okay, same thing. Um... She she nudges you, actually. And she's got the paper. She writes, Can't speak because I'm a mime. Got you. I wish I could. I wish you could, too. It makes things so much simpler. Um, fuck. All right. Um, I guess we're taking you back to the cabin with us because we don't know where the fucking purple coat lady is. No? She shakes her head. No, no. Shrugs. Okay, so... Uh, don't know. Where she is. Oh, you don't know where you are. Okay. Travis? I don't know where she is either. Input on this, what sh we should do, or we just... Travis hasn't been reading alongside. Yeah, I'm only hearing what you're replying. And okay. he's drinking. <laughs> so, she's a mime. She doesn't know where she's at. Should we take her back to the cabin with us? She's a mime. She's a mime, and she's lost. And she just Thanos snapped her wounds away. Pop she culture she reference. says that she says they have problems, immediate problems that need to be fixed. She didn't elaborate on the problems, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the bear things. Oh man, does she want to go to the cabin? I don't know. She nods. Yeah. Okay, she, she does. Okay. She can still hear you guys, and she's, like, looking between you as you talk. <laughs> Part of me wants to go full Travis and just start being chaotic. And, like, 
I start saying stuff, but I don't actually, I just mouth it, but I'm not saying anything to really fuck with her. She's like, wait, what? No, I can't hear you. Should, should we, <laughs> I, I walk, I walk over to Travis and kind of whisper in his ear. Oh. Should we show her the powder? Start clicking all the items and applying them to her. See what's what gives us it's any a point items. and click adventure. Come on, yeah. we got makeup kit, we got knife, we got <laughs> ring, crowbar, yeah, start, shovel. Start them. I don't know. This is how like, I oh, my point and click This adventure. is how we dig hey. up the dead bear. Yeah. Wow. yeah, let's go to the let's go to, let's go to the cabin, and at least she can see the evidence wall, and maybe she can tie some stuff together. All right. Maybe she's got some pieces we're missing. I, I have the shotgun. All right, Mime. Um, we, we're going to take you back to the cabin. Maybe you can make heads or tails of the stuff we got. Maybe not. We'll see. But either way, you're probably safer with us than out here by yourself. Does it have a name? Or do we just call it Mime? Look at the Mime. <laughs> she shrugs. Shrug. I guess we just call her Mime. Shrug. Okay. Oh, okay. Like shrug. Oh, all right, I'm gonna get up and head back to the cabin. Yep, we're heading back to the cabin. All right. I go around. Um, I go around the mushroom pit. Well, if I'm not mistaken, that's actually a, a another dryad thing, which just scares me even more. Hold on, just a second. Um, so she was bit and it, no, it's a it's a fucking fairy ring. That's what it is. She was bit and stabbed, and she dragged herself into the middle of this fairy dryad poster guy ring. Okay, Pickle, that's a fucking fairy ring, isn't it? Yes. Oh, that's not good at all. I didn't walk um, in it. Don't call me Pickle. Why can I not? Sorry, I'm running into a technical issue here for some reason. Uh, somebody's token is not proper. Um, it doesn't probably matter. mine. Did I take my clothes off again? Um, yeah, naked, <laughs> and I would like you not to be naked right now. We need to do an early break. Um, we could do a break now because then we've got a half hour or whatever, you know, forty-five minutes until the under the table. This is the one that's unless proper. you've got it. Okay, I've got it. Okay. Um, um, okay, yeah, so you guys are heading back. She seems pretty well uninjured at this point, um, and unarmed as well. She doesn't have any weapons on her. In fact, it doesn't really look like she has much at all beyond the clothing that she's wearing, which also seems to be relatively form fitting, except for like, um, a, a jacket that is more designed for the Pacific Northwest here, so to keep warm. It is all soaked in blood and this alcohol, but the alcohol seems to have mostly, I don't know, burned off? She's still soaked in blood in this outfit. And you guys make your way back to your area here, your cabin, and it dawns on you. It is still daylight. Uh, the sun is shining in the sky. It's very, very enticing and warm, and it, it kind of dawns on you that while you were in that area, especially Detective Verde, when you were in that fairy ring, you felt very cold, chilled. Temperature was very low there, I guess. Maybe that's just all the trees blocking the sunlight, but you're thankful to be back out here, back out at your cabin. Um, you guys aren't here yet. Um, and uh, approaching, you said you were going to your evidence room? Yeah. Is that correct? Kick back in the chair and let her have a look and see if she connects any dots. Yeah. Um, did you leave the mime knife there? Or are there any magic items or suspicious items or cursed items that you didn't want to leave out for her? Such as the clown cocaine. I, I get the mime knife with me. I had yeah. taken everything, but I'm more than happy to put it back out and just be like, hey, this is all the stuff we have. Is there anything you don't want to share? Mm. Not that I can think of. No. I'm alright. If she does right. anything dumb, I'll shoot her. <laughs> that works. I'll put you <laughs> in your chair with your gun. 
I'll put detective at the door, and I'll put dog on a box. And she's going to look at things specifically. Um, dog yeah, on a box. So... Bark, bark. Yep. Yeah, so she looks at everything and gives it a very serious, like, stare down at each item. She doesn't touch anything, except for the mime knife, which she picks up with two fingers and, like, holds it. And looks at you, Detective Verde, and nods like an impressive kind of nod. <laughs> Most she sets impressive. It down. Um, I'm just watching intently for any... I don't know, she sees something and like, gets a facial change, but doesn't tell us it, like, on, on, like, trying to notice everything. Yeah, it seems like she's trying to articulate what it would be like to use these things. And, be, like, she points to the, the ring that you probably put down there, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it does a very strong, impressive, like, uh, uh, like, almost a battle cry, like, come at me, bro, gesture. Like, uh, and, and then pretends to get hit several times, and is just like, Ugh. The tattoo on my wrist? The the ring. No, I have a tattoo on my wrist. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. I'll point to the tattoo as well and see if she has any reaction. Um, she actually seems a little confused by that one. Like, hmm. I'll point. Oh, well, I can talk. <laughs> uh, I'll be like, I got the tattoo. The mime has infected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the tattoo the same place I found that ring. It emblazons itself on me. She uh, makes, she points to your your tattoo and makes a little heart sign with her hands, and then points to you, like your face. I wink at her. Then she points to the the clown cocaine and like, <laughs> what is this girl trying to do drugs with us right now? She she really looks like she's curious um, about that. Like Travis wanna party. Going through all the things, but then is also at attractive? the end it's like so it's hard to tell with all the makeup on. Fred kinda just shrugs. I've never been with a mime. I was kinda hoping you could tell us what that is, but you know. She nods. Um and she begins to gesture and she like picks it up, the the bag itself, and like motion scooping it and like putting it in your mouth. She says like their gestures like really strong and also that it sounds like talking something would be talking apparently if you eat it and then she gestures like mm, of course if you snort it and she uses a fingernail and like then someone royal or like a priestess is going to come like somebody you would bow to that's what she gestures that is really confusing, but all right. She nods. Wait. No, I wasn't. Sorry. It's meta you guys can, you can see that. Yeah, oh, but meta, yeah. there's things that she wrote, but I didn't see them. She gestures for you both to maybe eat? Eat. All right, cocaine. fuck it. I'll try anything once. Fred takes a dab and puts it on his tongue. Travis is watching the cop do drugs. <laughs> it tastes like sugar. Um, like sugar candy. Like, uh, it, it, it's like a more granular, um, nerd's candy, you know? I don't know if you have yeah. that there. Like that really sugary, high-octane, whatever, corn syrup made into crunchiness. It, it, that's what it tastes like, is very synthetic, fake sugary berry flavor. But the flavor keeps shifting. It's always synthetic, and it's always kind of fruity-based, but it keeps shifting. And uh, nothing bad seems to happen. It's like you just had a little bit of sugar on your tongue. But yeah, you, you look at Travis King, and he's looking a little disappointed in you. You look at the mime. <laughs> the usual. You look at the mime, and all of a sudden, you have this sensation. You don't actually see it with your eyes, but you have the sensation of subtitles and her Titles. saying <laughs> can you hear me now whoa yeah i can hear you her lips don't move at all she's just sort of moving her head and do i hear him say that yeah i can hear you you can hear him 
Mime lady, this is really weird, but also really awesome at the same time. Is he high? Well, she doesn't really make much of a response to you, Travis King, but to to you, well, you see the subtitles. I'm, now I'm the I know this is strange. It's unfortunately a sacrifice we have to make in order what do you to mean fight sacrifice? back. Sacrifice. I don't fully understand. You would have to talk to the queen. All right, there's that word again. Um, do you know who the queen is? She's the one who guides us all. I tried to gesture. If you stick this horrible powder in your nose, you'll get a meeting with her royal mimeness. <laughs> royal mimeness. Okay, that's not something I was expecting to hear today. It's not always a good idea. Only the king should seek an audience. Okay. If it's not a good idea for me to seek an audience, why should I seek an audience? My name's King. I suppose if you had a pressing matter, if you knew something that would benefit benefit her, her war. That was oh. a typo. And it got crossed out immediately. <laughs> the like, subtitles benefit yeah. and then like backspace back. <laughs> like this is the part where Travis King, you just see them like staring at each other and then all of a sudden she's like <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> you can tell your friend that this is safe to eat um the mime says this is safe to eat the mom didn't say shit you're high so are you N no no i'm not <laughs> what <laughs> travis i've been a figment of your imagination for three fucking episodes Dun 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 dun. Wait, then what were you before that? Because we spent like seven episodes <laughs> together. An irritable detective. <laughs> An irritable detective. You went on vacation by yourself, man. All right, I pull out my gun and I shoot my imagination. <laughs> yeah, you want to take that back now? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no, I am not high. We convinced probably. Travis King that he's just insane, so he just. Uh, okay, it, so and, uh, that's the end of this campaign. <laughs> so the the powder is like mime <laughs> translation powder. Can you imagine the whole campaign ends in murder suicide. <laughs> <laughs> the strange town of Golden. Ridge. Talk about the worst <laughs> ending. <laughs> <laughs> to the I planned it. You're like, oh I my, it. <laughs> my players all killed this. their characters off on purpose. <laughs> it's a suicide campaign. Yeah, that's insane. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Um, I don't know if I can post this on YouTube. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, edit that part uh, out. Uh, you can have the blue bleep just, stuff, man. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not doing drugs, which is weird for Travis, but I think Travis is already insane that he's, like, getting high right now while not help. <laughs> I feel like I've never done a character who would do drugs. We actually had this conversation a while back, but we'll talk about it at the end of the table. Anyways, um... Yeah. No. I'm So what are you learning? Supposedly I am learning from this trip. I, I I am learning that there apparently is a queen of mimes. Uh huh. Um There's also a king of mimes? Yeah, of course. Uh huh. Um there is a problem that's going on that it's kind of huge and very problematic. Yeah. We, okay. We, we kind of figured that one out ourselves, but... Um... So, is she... She's at war with aliens? She didn't specify. I'm not quite sure if she knows what they're fighting. You do see the subtitles. Whatever is coming from those tunnels, we fight back. So they're fighting the zombie things we've been fighting. Okay. But her people are good. They're not evil zombie things, and the other things are evil. Is there a clear good guy, bad guy in this nothing. scenario? It's not really clear, but so far the only thing that hadn't tried to kill us is the mimes. It's true. So what's she know about Drunk squirrels and zombie bears. <laughs> Looks to the mime. 
I'm trying we to connect. Sense. I'm trying to connect dots here. I'll probably I'll we walk over sense. to the to the board and start moving the red wire around to like start connecting stuff. Be like, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. This to that. I'll put up a yeah. playing card of a queen and king. Yeah, see, I'm certain that uh, there was likely a deck of cards in here if you didn't even pack one. Perfect. Every cabin has a deck of cards. It's it's, true. it's mandatory. Yeah. Um, mandatory. Yeah, the subtitles that come to you is, we can sense when there are disturbances and when there are movements in the tunnels. There is a movement over here that upset my commander greatly. That's why we shipped out here as soon as we could to address it immediately. Problems need to be solved as soon as possible. Okay, she says there was a problem over here that they had to come solve, so her commander sent her out here, and I'm assuming the people we've been found finding hung up and killed and murdered are what's left of her unit? Unit commander, she's in the military? I guess she's a mime soldier? Exploding truck! What she know about that? Uh, looks she turns, mind. she can hear she turns to you, <laughs> since you're the only one with the subtitles and uh, she says, yes, I was on that truck we were attacked by a girl in a purple coat with unnatural powers, very much beyond our own, and beyond your friends, the librarians or even the chosen of flame I don't see this can you run that by me again? What I... the fuck? Completely blanked. She's has well, your friend, oh my God. Um, yep. the chosen of flames, yeah, and myself, mimes like me. Right. We all have powers that break the laws of physics a little bit, but this chosen girl in the purple flames. coat can break any rule. Any rule. What? She just created massive blades of light that destroyed our truck. And as we were hunted down, it's as if she could convince locals to just kill us. We've never been in danger from the locals around here. Did she have a flute? She did not. Strange. Is she a fae? I think she is mortal like us. But there is somebody with animals that's Possibly aligned with her out in the woods. I don't know. I was attacked by rabid animals. Oh, this gets worse and worse as we go. Um, I believe that these are two separate enemies of our kind. Uh, one of us who has turned to an evil side with cursed magics. You're that... talking about a dark mind. I... Don't even know anything about dark mimes. <laughs> well, you just said you somebody turned to the bad side because of dark magic. So I assumed dark mime. Yes, this this girl in a purple coat is not aligned with us. Darth and as mime. far as I know, not aligned with the Chosen of Flame. Not aligned with your friend and the librarians. How did you even know I had a friend in the librarians? The woods echo. I could hear many things. What? Woods echo. What about okay. the librarian? The librarian that I hit on that was at the school? No, no, Tim. I didn't hit on Tim. It, there's apparently multiple He's factions a running around. Not a librarian. No, apparently the group he works for is called the librarians, and it's oh. confusing. All right. <laughs> we should call this episode should be called "Secret Societies." What? Yeah, Why? No, right? How many are there? <laughs> What the fuck? You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> she then says with her subtitles very forcefully, I'm going to need you to be my comrades now. You are going to need to be the soldiers if you want to save this area. The area uh, part is where uh, she falters. It's very forceful and then the area. Where are we? Um... So, there's this place. It's called Golden Ridge. Um, it's just down the road. Uh, yes, I don't we're know traveling you... north from Golden Ridge. Or, no. Yeah. So we're north of Golden Ridge. Yeah, and you, you are definitely north. She seems to know that general 
It's just where in the woods she is. Seems okay. We're like really near the main highway that goes north. All right. Right. Are you two prepared to fight, or are you? You're probably just here hiking as civilians. The the original idea, Mrs. Mime, was for us to come up here on vacation, but we we've kind of been dragged into shit because we got squirrels at squirrel bars, we've got zombie bears running around, we've got Paul in the woods somewhere. Um She turns to Travis King at the Paul part and like looks at you like mouths the word Paul. Oh, Paul, yeah, he's a homeless guy uh, who left me for dead in a lake. Kind of a dick move. Uh, otherwise, seems harmless. Fuck it, sure, why not? I can. Kill the him. subtitles say the lake is not unfriendly. She says the lake's friendly. How's a <laughs> what? She points to your tattoo on your arm, and then. Kind of shrugs. The lake gave me a tattoo, and it's my friend. The lake is my friend. What's the lake's name? What the fuck am I saying? She shrugs, and the subtitles say, well, how would I know a lake's name? But it didn't drown him, did it? <laughs> he, asked, he asked if it drowned you. Obviously it didn't. It was a sarcastic I mean, kind of, but then, it, it, I mean, like, I blacked out. I think I drowned, but then I was still alive. I might be undead now. It's weird. I haven't been trying to bring it up, but I'm kind of going insane, because I'm pretty sure I'm dead. That would explain a lot of this, actually. Man, I can't even tell Tim about the damn mime, because he doesn't like mimes. Oh. She, the, li the subtitles say, the librarians are quite closed-minded. Soldiers, I need you both to be prepared. We need to explore further. We need to find out any given evidence. We need to know where this disturbance is coming from. Can I count on you two? Of course, only one of you hears this. <laughs> Sees us. Sees us. All right. <laughs> she, she wants us to be soldiers to help her figure out this mess and end it. She wants to know if she can count on us. Hold up, so you got some shadow army of mimes fighting un alien creatures from the depths fighting bestial druids of the woods, right? Three way war going on, and she just and wants then, a competent well, detective I to just come in and help. No! <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's not a not three way being... war. We've also got purple jacket lady running around. There's, oh, yeah, there's a girl in a purple coat, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. None of that makes sense. I seek contracts for people that didn't go to court. I don't fight in legendary wars of mythological creatures and shit. Fred tosses the bag of powder to, Ra to Travis. Just, I just also don't do... I mean, I do drugs. I'm pretty sure taste I'm dead. Shit, Travis! Travis. I'm getting tired of translating. Take the, th take the shit. The only reason I will is because Travis is pretty convinced that he died in that lake, and this is all just... <laughs> like, I'm, I'm genuine. I'm being serious. Travis has pretty yeah, much yeah. come to the conclusion that he died in that lake, and this is all just kind of like afterlife, like paranormal, like, uh, what's that movie where you go there and like everything's weird? Purgatory? No, Twilight Zone. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty sure do, I haven't do, seen do, Purgatory. Do, do, do. Yeah. He's pretty sure that's kind of what's going on. Um, <laughs> Jack goes, someone new came into chat, and they're like, what's going on here? Oh, I guess this is some kind of weird made-up story. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're weird in the woods. Um. So, yeah, Travis is going to be like, you know what? I'm dead. So, he's going to do What's drugs. the worst going to happen? <laughs> you just want to take a taste? I guess, yeah, he does. Travis, don't do drugs, kids. I mean, you could just, like, put a little bit on your tongue, is what I mean. It, by a taste. Travis, unfortunately, would probably know how to do it. So, yeah, he, he does whatever he's supposed to do. 
Well, you just saw it. Your comrade uh, detective put yeah, it on his tongue and eat a little bit. Do drugs. Uh, well, eating cocaine is not how you do it properly. Gumming it is not efficient. It, I just it, put um, it on my tongue, all right? Okay. Yeah. I guess I do that because that's what I'm supposed to do. You could snort it, I guess. Well, if you but were that does something ball. different from what I heard. So yep. <laughs> It does something different that we have no idea. Yeah, I don't know if I want to go down that trip just yet. So, Well... It tastes like cotton candy. Oh my gosh, it's so sweet. It's like nerd candy on your tongue. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's alarming. It's like, wait, this is probably just like sugar. Like somebody ground up a bunch of like pop rocks and they're even like popping in your mouth. Like it, it feels like a joke is being played on you until like you look away from Detective Verde and you look at the mime and you can see those subtitles in your mind. She says, I really do need both of you to help. The reason why I'm asking you to help is because the rest of my group is dead. I'm the last one in my unit, and I'm, like, not even one of the high-ranking members. I... So you have a bunch you... of trained super soldier mimes that died, so you want untrained people to come in, and obviously we're going to do better. You're seeing subtitles, right? I'm not... Yep, yep, that's why I wanted you to take the stuff. Subtitles help. Titan has a subtitle. It's just bark. <laughs> Dog gets subtitles too. I'm so glad I did this now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that just made it all worth it. In fact, Titan actually has like emoticons instead of actual yeah. words. <laughs> it's the person talking, but it just like has the three lines coming out of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Um, a Titan looks at at um, Travis King and gives out heart emoticon in the subtitles. Oh, yeah, <laughs> adorable. Um, I mean, she wants us to go be. I apologize. You don't need to do this. The subtitles read for you. Just you've helped me enough as it is. For some reason, I thought. Perhaps you'd be uh, able okay. to help. Just realize this is a really hard decision for us because we're not military at all. She points to your shotgun. I'm a cop. Do, do you know what a cop is? She nods. Yeah, I, I don't do military things. I do... This guy stole something and or murdered someone and I need to figure out who did it. So let me get this straight. So technically, we're, you and I are on an investigation for these alien things under the city, which the police are covering up, right? That's that's where we're at. All this extra shit is, like, blowing my mind, right? But what she's yep. saying is she wants us to go help her fight those alien things under the city. So technically, that does kind of go back to what we wanted to do anyway, right? Yep. Yep. So maybe she would just give us a lead on where to go from there because we were kind of at a standstill. Maybe. See, well, I'm, I'm trying to, like, give this reason. I mean, yeah, none of this makes sense. I'm pretty sure I'm dead, but I'm just kind of going with it. Okay, if if you were dead, that would mean I was dead. Or you're just a figment of my dead post-apocalypse, post-body, mortem, whatever. I don't know how death works. I thought we just Now you got me like thinking I may be a figment of your imagination. Thanks. Well, like, would you have died recently? Was there anything? You came into contact with, like, mutant zombie bears. Did they kill you? Mm. that was around the same time that I died underwater, right? This, this is a possibility. The pine is just sitting in the back, confused. <laughs> oh no, they're thinking they're dead. We we fully convinced. I'm fully convinced. Travis is far more convinced that he's dead than he, that he's not dead. But he doesn't know how to read. handle that. He doesn't know like, do I just go along with it or do I just like stop and like snap and wake up, pinch myself? Like, how does it work when you're dead? Like, do I am I stuck in this and this is just the reality now? Like, he doesn't really know how to react, so he's just kind of like, I guess I'll go along with it. Make yourself some food. That's what it says. Eat some food. I, I don't know how we're going to do that if we're dead. I mean... Do we still have taste buds? Create These some food. It, it, her, her subtitles read, 
approach this like you are normal because this is going to be one of the last normal moments you have for a while. This is oh, normal. That doesn't, that doesn't sound ominous at all. I'm um, reading subtitles. <laughs> the subtitles continue to read. Just We will go on to a fight. We will succeed if you both full-heartedly join me. Post-drug munchies? Is that what's happening right now? Let's eat and prepare, and then we will march. I don't think they have drugs in heaven. This must be hell. Fuck it, if we're already dead, we might as well, right? She shakes her head in confusion and then nods, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I have kiss buds in hell. I'm gonna go pick up some food. Actually, in hell, you don't wish you had taste buds. <laughs> oh, this is good. Um, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So, <laughs> you guys are able to make some like cold sandwiches if you want, or if you want to get back to the campfire, you could, of course, try to embrace this last moment of humanity, normalness of vacation. You could start by the campfire, see what happens there, or you can do something more efficient. In your uh, in-house kitchen. Yep, what would let's you guys make like coffee do? and hot dogs over the campfire. Because Ooh. why the fuck not? Coffee and hot dogs. Is that what coffee you want as well? Coffee and hot dogs. Then that's that's like uh, getting ready to. You're revved up. Is protein. It? That just sounds like protein and problems. caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> protein and caffeine, man. It sounds like we're gonna be on the toilet for the rest of the adventure. Profine. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know why I was fuzzing on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to do coffee and hot dogs, but I'll cook something <laughs> over the fire. <laughs> I'll have like a normal dinner. Yeah, okay. So you, you guys, it, it's an early dinner because it's probably like uh, 3 or 3.30. What are them beans called that go good? You always do over campfire. Oh, Baked beans? Baked beans, yeah. We'll do like a nice like baked oh, beans yeah. with... Uh, whatever else, I don't mm. care. It doesn't matter as long as it's just baked beans. This sounds delicious. You, you probably have like some cornbread or biscuits or something that you brought along oh, that you could reheat. Sounds so good. Yeah, you, well, as I said, you guys got food to yeah. make stuff that you could make at a campfire. Um, plenty of beer, too, apparently. Um, Let's do that. That sounds great. I like the way you think, Tim. Yeah, Bill, so you Bill, guys. Mime? Shrug, whatever her name is. That was me, not her, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> she just she gestures at the baked beans like that's a good idea. Um, yeah. Anyways, so you guys get a campfire going. It as I said, it's about like three o'clock, three thirty when you're doing this, and so you're getting everything ready and you you have your food. She seems a little antsy initially, but then she's just sort of like getting more into it and in a way, mimicking your body language. The more you guys relax, the more she seems to relax. And though she's still looking over her shoulders every once in a while, there's not really this push to move forward. She does ask you guys questions. Um, specifically, you, Travis. Like, how long have you been in Golden Ridge? What have it been, like, months? Three months? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Are uh, you enjoying long, Golden Ridge? How long do I have subtitles for? Uh, you ask her that, and she uh, seems to be thinking, like, depending how much you took, depends on how long it lasts. It should be hours. With shit that gives us subtitles and meets the queen of wherever. Why would this be locked in a basement with a weight and all that in a drawer of a desk? I we don't often want people to find this hey, unless it's necessary. You lock the door to the basement? Not me, but we usually lock these in places where only we would think to look or be able to get into hopefully without a lot of effort. I, I don't I don't know. The basement was like one of the first places we looked. <laughs> yeah. But we hit it, it, it is it wasn't it like under a board or in a drawer? Listen, so you're I, saying a drawer is two, a place most people wouldn't look. We're two detectives <laughs> with the curious traits, so <laughs> you are playing the shit is underlined twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We're gonna well, find ideally, it. these things are hidden so that people can't use them. We, we have a limited amount of this. Place, like the back of the toilet, but we checked the warp <laughs> desk drawer of the basement. I I wouldn't ask you to use this unless it was incredibly necessary to our goals. Were you the one who went in and trashed my clue room? Evidence room? What? No. Well, okay. Weird. What? Have Why would ever... I trash an evidence room? Wait. <gasps> you saved me. We're all dead. No wonder there's poster guys here. Poster guys? That's it. We're all dead. That's that's the only explanation. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's a post <laughs> there's a poster guy in the basement. That the mime out. thinks they're dead, too. <laughs> the subtitles are getting more panic. Like, no, no, no. I can't, I can't be alone. I can't be alone. I need you two to keep it together. No, I need a, you two a, to be my soldiers. There was a poster guy in the basement. We're not going to make this unless we're... Com uh. We let a poster guy out of the basement and he trashed my evidence room, I think. I Travis, what's a poltergeist? That's what... I, whatever he said. I don't know all the paranormal stuff. I, I don't know what happened to you. I've been in the field bleeding out for a while before you guys okay. came to me. Right. I, I couldn't just see if this we've was had, We've had a week, let me tell you. I was just curious if it was connected. What was your other question you had for me? Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, how are you liking Golden Ridge? But hey, I'm dead. This is Purgatory Place. I don't even think I actually moved here. I think... Wait, did I move here, or did, did yeah. I come here because you, I was dead? You were just here for a job, Travis. So I did You're move here job. myself. I died at the lake. That's what we've come to? No, 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 no. You didn't move here. You just you just came for a job, and now you died in the lake, and we're here. <laughs> she looks at you guys, and, so, and the subtitles say, You're not dead. Come on. You're well, eating what's hot your dogs. What's your explanation for this? That shit? makes huh? me being dead makes way more sense than anything else. The subtitles say, "All I know." You know, I can breathe water. That's new. All I know is that there are a number of forces in Golden Ridge that are attempting to fight against some sort of evil underneath the town. Can I get a cup of water, fill up my mouth, and just breathe out of my gills? Is that how it works, or do I have to, like, stick my head in a bucket? Like, X-Men first class. If you intentionally breathe in the water, then yes. You can make it come out the sides of your head. <laughs> yes, I'm doing this. I'm Disgusting. Proof. Look! <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't do that. She points at your tattoo, and the subtitles say... Yes, the lake has blessed you. So did you die or did you get blessed? This sounds like the you, same thing to cause, me. Because you can't be both. Because blessings imply that you're alive. Uh, understand that things... I think tomato, tomato, they're just calling it different things. To, to evil, undead things, maybe it's called a blessing. People who are alive... No, 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 no. To, we are very near something that is a, a disturbance. Let's let's call it a, a disturbance in reality. And if there's like a big <laughs> wormhole in, in a certain area, everything around it will start to malform and turn into strange things. Animals that are normal will start walking on hind legs and being zombie-like. The things you're seeing are because there is a great disturbance. And my people, my soldiers that I work alongside, those who have died in service to trying to solve this, trying to find out why... This disturbance is happening here, and to see if there's anything we can do to shut it down immediately. When we sense these minor disturbances, we try and respond as quickly as possible. Was the scorch and, marks on the road where your truck crashed? Was that from pur Purple Coat? I couldn't say for sure. Uh, when when it hit, like my sisters, I was trying to take down this threat. Are all bodies women? Is it a fully woman army? We do have some bishops. That's what her royal mimeness calls them. The queen says that the bishops always must be men. They are the ones who can generally understand us naturally. 
without having to meet her royal mindness or taste this. <sighs> okay, okay, um, okay. I shouldn't have asked her. Uh, no. Just when I think I'm getting a grasp of what's going on, <laughs> throwing new stuff in, and I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. Okay. There are many things that I know, but I don't understand. Same. So you want us to go fight the aliens, is what you're saying. Whatever it is that's creating the disturbance, we need to stop it. And if you won't help me, I will have to do it myself. Is the but she holds up her hands. Is the Not disturbance us. thing only here in the woods, or is that what's creating the aliens back in town? I don't know. Think of it like radar. There's a ping. We know there's a ping. We go to see what it is. I mean, I'm free for the next, like, 200,000 years, or however long dead people are around for. All right, let's do it. Well, mine... I guess you've got yourself an army. An army right, of two. All three of you, get your equipment. Um, suit up and prepare to march. We're going oh, into the goodness. woods. <gasps> Bark? Did Titan die? No, Titan's sitting there next to you, giving no, you a emoticon. I'm, I'm fully. I try. Is Titan dead too? Did he die? He gives um, Detective is, Verde. Is he well, just both like... of you see this, but he's looking at Detective Verde, and he gives sunglasses a moat. <laughs> he's feeling cool when he looks at Verde. <laughs> All right, sure, let's do it. I don't. I'm gonna. In my head, I'm gonna believe that Titan's still alive, but I've projected him into my like undead reality because I missed him. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's how I'm um, <laughs> okay, so you guys are grabbing equipment, grabbing your clothing that you need, um, finishing up whatever food, coffee, yeah. um, beer, uh, <laughs> soda pops. Um, if you have guns, you're probably grabbing several shells to go with it or an extra clip or two to go yeah. with it. Um, is there anything that you want to like mention that you definitely want to take, such as armor? Are you suiting up in any armor or are oh, you just like going with like a jacket. No, nope. I'm fully, fully kitted. Is that the same for you, Fred? I, I didn't hear your answer. Yep, I'm fully kitted. Okay. You got your guns, you got your equipment. Um, any tools that you want to take that you think might be heavy that you kind of want to mention? Like, are you carrying a shovel with you or a crowbar? Um, in, anything that might be... Where are we going? <laughs> this Does is that somewhere that say... we walk or that we drive. We're going to march into the woods, she says. We're just marching into the woods, okay. Uh, then probably not, because I need to be able to move. Okay. Um, and presumably you'll pack some water and some snacks for the road, but not like any meals necessarily. Her subtitles say, we're going to march to an area nearby and hopefully come back before nightfall. That sounds hopeful. I, I, I'm... She nods. And begins to lead you guys out into the woods. Travis, I think this Travis is the appropriate does a very part. Exaggerated march. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is an appropriate moment. Hurrah, for we... hurrah. Oh my god, we're we're going full World War Two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going the full World War Two. One, one by one, hurrah! hurrah. 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 The dead hurrah. men go marching one by one. Anyways, hurrah. Titans marching hurrah. too. <laughs> we're all just <laughs> marching. Titans back there, like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right at the end of the line. And I'm like over by the campfire being like, okay, I'll put it out. This, no, the screen goes black out. and white like the classic Andy Griffith <laughs> show. We're just like... <laughs> yeah, I think that's an appropriate moment to end this session with um, a lot more questions, a few answers, and um, um, like time to go under the table in a few moments. Absolutely. Thank no. you, everybody, for. for... Wait, were you done? I, I was, was okay. going to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Fred? No, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for uh, joining us over on the live stream. If you guys enjoyed, let us know. Um, these videos all will, all will go up on YouTube. Hopefully, we'll see if they get taken down. Um, but uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this series so far. What a, what a, if you guys want to know more, um, we're going into a, a session called Under the Table where we break down the whole episode and the whole campaign as a whole. Um, open it up to full Q&A. 
everything goes. You can talk about anything. Obviously, uh, Pickles will, won't give away spoilers, but he'll try and answer all the questions that he can as best he can. Um, just of stuff that we should have picked up or stuff that we, you know, should know up to this point or whatever. Um, but anyways, you guys are more welcome to join us for that. Um, once again, thank you. Um, huge shout out to the players, Pickles. Uh, you want to do a shout out on the projects you're working on? Yeah, um, I'm part of a podcast because of course I am. Um, it's with my friend Brad, aka Chison. Um, we talk about movies and whatnot. We complain about things. It's called, and I took that personally. It's on uh, Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify. Just talk about movies that we think are absurd or upset us or we want to talk about. Last one was Mazes and Monsters. And on 420, we're going to be coming out with Evil Bong <laughs> and how it's not even a movie about an evil bong. It's an advertisement for every other movie like in that series and, and like by the director. It's a movie that doesn't deserve to exist on its own. And we go into that a lot and what things mean and why it's the most absurd thing. So stay tuned for that. Actually, I might have seen that one. It's I might have for I forced a lot of people to watch <laughs> it. Like, like this is terrible. You might have like, yes, watched that one. Yes it is. Um, <laughs> Anyways, that's yeah. my thing. Go check and it out. I took it's that actually, personally. It's actually really entertaining and interesting. So go go check that one out. Fred, do you exist? I exist. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's really important. Um yeah. I, I know you don't have anything. I just feel bad, like us only talking. So I, I mean, to you. if you have armor or history questions, hit me up in the Discord. Um, there you go. I'll answer eventually. And uh, my name is Rath. I do all kinds of stuff here on the the Twitch stream. Um, we have drinks and discussions goes down every Monday. This Monday, this upcoming Monday, we have a one shot that we created. It's gonna be a shit show, and uh, that's going down. Um, on. Tuesdays, I run uh, an episode of King's Crossing, my own D&D campaign, or Zweihander campaign, I should say. Um, on Sundays, when we're not doing um, Strange Town Golden Ridge, we run another group of King's Crossing, where these two are my players, um, as Grunkle and Torvac kept going through that. Um, we've also got a couple other things going on in the side stuff, uh, hopefully Raft coming in here eventually. Um, uh, some Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough, stuff like that. So you can check all that out over on the YouTube or here in the live streams. But that's it from us. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you in the next one. If you're watching Adios. on live stream, stick around because we're going into Under the Table.